Amen. John chapter number John chapter number 10. Last week we spoke from Luke chapter 19 and we're preaching about why did Jesus came? It wasn't just so we could have an Easter service, though like I said, that's the main thing. If there's no Easter, then we need to throw this book away and find some other way. Okay? Uh, if there's no Easter, this entire book is a lie. Okay? But there is, there was, and there is a resurrection. Jesus Christ came out of that grave. But he wants us to not only think of it as he's going to do one thing for us. Well, Jesus saved me. Well, what has he done since he saved you? I hear a lot of people uh, uh, testify. I've heard a lot of people testify. They got saved at three and four and five and six. And um, that's all good. The earlier, the better. Sometimes I wonder if at three years old, you could really understand. Um, you could really understand the need for your your soul to be saved. Okay, if God reveals it to you, you can. But um, my question is always, what are you doing now? What, uh, not, not just, and when I say that, I'm not just, what are you doing? What, are, what am I doing now? Well, God saved me in 1982. Well, praise God. What have you done since then? <laughs> what has he done in your life? Have you let him work in your life? When you were in a low point or a needy point or a point where God opened your mind, you don't have to be at the bottom of the barrel to give your heart to God. You could be at the top of the world. You could be at the, the full top of your game. Um, there's a football player that was extremely successful. I won't mention his name, but now he speaks very openly uh, about being an NFL football player and being very, very vile, sinful, uh, having all the cars and the houses and the money and the girls and just party animal. He said, and lost and on my way to hell. He, and now he's, he spends a lot of time testifying about how Jesus saved him. He wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. He was raking in the millions. He was very, very successful um, uh, uh, NFL player. And he, he, talks, he talks about how in all of that, he was never satisfied. He wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. He was at the top of the heap, so to speak. And he needed God. So you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be someone um, on their last breath. Oh, they're ready to receive Jesus. It could be someone that they think they're going to be, you know, the king of the universe or something. And just realize, man, I'm lonely inside. So what has God done for us since then? And this is part of the preaching and the presentation of the gospel that God wants to work in our lives right now. Amen? Because guess what? You have either come out of a big battle with the devil, or you're in a big battle of the devil with the devil, or you're getting ready to go into a battle. Okay, you either come out of one, you're in one, or going into one. So, guess what? <laughs> There's a song we, we would sing. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. We're on the battlefield. Christianity is not a picnic, it's a warfare. That's why God said, put on the whole armor of God. He said, didn't, he didn't say, put on your bib to wear, to eat some fried chicken and uh, apple pie. Okay. No, no, that's okay. We can do that at times. But he, he said, put on the armor of God. And he, 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 in Ephesians 6, he talks about a soldier uh, getting prepared for uh, a conflict that can become fatal. And so God is an ever-present help in the time of need. John chapter number uh, 10, I'll start reading at verse 1. Um, and for the most part, I just started reading out of the King James again because, and I'm going to tell, tell you why. 
It's what I read for 40 years or 38 years or whatever. And I studied others, but I read it. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't want to lose the ability to quote scripture. I don't want to misquote because I've added three or four other versions. Okay? That's, this is just something the Lord put in my heart. Because you know what? If we live long enough, they're going to take this from us. If Jesus doesn't come home soon, guess what? You're not going to, it's going to be illegal. It, it's illegal to own a Bible in, in Japan. They will print them and sell them to Americans, but you can't have, or not Japan, in, um, in China. Okay? And so uh, the church in China, the church in, in Iran, the church in a lot of places in Nigeria, a lot, in different places in Africa, in other places ar around the world has to be underground and secretive. And so I believe unless Jesus comes back first, it can happen here because America is messed up. God has blessed America. God has used America to promote freedom and, and the gospel, the ability to preach and teach the gospel around the world. But, uh, uh, wow, America is really messed up right now, okay? America is really, really, really messed up right now. So I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but I'm telling you, you need to hide God's word in your heart, amen? Because they may, there may come a time when this thing is not legal. Already, already in Canada, you, there's a lot of things you can't preach against. And that's, that's just 100 miles north of us. There's a lot of things. Preachers are going to jail in Canada for preaching against homosexuality, preaching against uh, uh, they, uh, uh, telling their children... Uh, uh, no, you were born a boy, you're a boy. You were born a girl, you're a girl. You'll always be a girl. You can't change that. Preachers are going to jail just 100 miles north of us for preaching the gospel. Okay? So we can't just, just get a more comfortable pillow and think it's, it could never happen here. Because it can. I hope it doesn't. I pray against it. I pray for revival where the president gets saved and uh, the, 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 the congressmen and senators and judges and these people that write the laws and break the laws. And oh man, I, I want them to be saved. Okay, I pray against what I'm actually saying. But uh, you better put on the whole armor of God. And you better know what this thing says, okay? That's just, uh, that wasn't written down. That's just free this morning, okay? Uh, so that's why I, I went back. I mainly read and teach from the King James. I incorporate the other versions, okay? But I don't want to lose that sharpness because so many scriptures in the Bible, like I cannot even, like I'm not even, it's hard to just, if you ask me to quote scriptures, to just start quoting a whole bunch of them okay but if whenever i need them because i've spent years putting them putting them in there the holy ghost brings them to me and they're there okay it's a miracle of god so that's why i'm i'm uh you i go back and forth new king james king james new living translation uh i use the others for reference but i really that's just kind of a that's where I am, okay? So just put your seatbelts on and let's go. John chapter 1, John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way is okay and he'll be all right anyway. No, Jesus said the same as a thief and a robber. Uh, <laughs> But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep heareth his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not 
what things they were which he spake unto them. <coughs> now notice, he's telling them something and they didn't understand it. So guess what? When you read something and you don't understand it, don't get frustrated. Ask God for the understanding. Ask God for the understanding. God, what does this mean? God, how are you speaking to me here? What do you have to say to me right here, God? I want, I want to know. Okay? Um, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. And that means anyone, there were, oh, there were always people claiming to be the Messiah or the only last prophet of God and, and, and all of that, okay? But the one who was the last prophet, the last prophet of the Old Testament was who? Who, who knows who that was? John the Baptist, okay? It was John the Baptist. When they asked him who he was, he didn't say, I am God's last prophet. Of the, no, he said, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. You see, when you know who you are in God, you don't have to make a big fuss about it. <laughs> when people come up and say, hi, I'm, I'm prophet uh, John Johnson, or I'm prophet George, or I'm prophetess Mary, uh, Mary Lou or whatever, okay? When people have to introduce their, you know, give their introduction like that, I'm already backing up like, okay. If you're a prophet, I'll know it because the fruits will be there. But Jesus said, all that ever came before him were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture or be satisfied and be nourished. Okay? We have to enter by Jesus Christ. He is the way to the Father. Verse 10. He says, and this is the, the, this is the, um, the scripture text in verse 10. But I want you to notice here, all the way through this, what I've read, the Bible is teaching by contrast the good and the bad. Always catch what the Bible, what the Bible is teaching you. God, what are you saying here? Okay, God is showing us bad and he's showing us good. This is, this is bad, this is good. This is, he's teaching by contrast. And then it gets very plain in verse 10. Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. We're preaching about why Jesus came. Last week from Luke chapter 19, preaching about Zacchaeus, Jesus said, the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Okay, so Jesus came to save. Praise God. When you know, when you realize you're a sinner, that's one of the greatest times of your life. Not so you can go make more sin, but so you realize, hey, as good as I think I am, I'm a sinner and I need to get saved. Sinners need salvation. Amen? Sinners need salvation. You, you really can't be saved until you understand you're lost. That's why people say they're saved at three years old, and I don't want to take that from them. If they live like, live to save life, then praise God, okay? But, but, I mean, I remember my, my stepson at, uh, he was like four years old, and one Sunday morning we preached, and, and uh, we had to go quickly after church. It was, we were starting a church, so there was probably about 10 people there or something like that. And uh, 
Where's Josh? Where's Josh? We couldn't find Josh, a little four-year-old kid. He was at the altar. God had touched his heart. God, is, God had touched his heart, and he felt like he was, I don't know what he, I can't remember what he had done, but somehow he knew he was a little sinner. He needed to ask Jesus. To, so uh, beautiful place to find a little boy at the altar praying. But Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. We're preaching about why Jesus came. He came to save, okay? But salvation isn't the end within itself. Jesus saved me when I was 19 years old. Okay, I just, uh, a couple months in the, after my 19th birthday, okay, but I'm getting ready to be 61 this spring. So what he did 41 years ago, thank God for it, but I've lived 41 years. I need him every day. What's the song say? I need thee every hour. We don't need to just sing that when everything goes south on us. We, we, if, if, if we live that, if we live that, then when everything goes south, we're like, well, it's going south again. Praise God. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do in this one, God, but I give you the glory and I just thank you and we, we believe. Because here, Jesus said, I am come, the same one who said, I'm come to seek and to save, he now says, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. This verse gives us a glimpse into the spiritual activity behind the scenes of human history. Jesus said, the thief cometh to steal, kill, destroy. The enemy is after every one of us and really every human being, even the ones he has. There, there are people, they, you know, they boast about worshiping the devil and I'm with the devil now, I'm going to be with him when I die, so I might as well be with him now. They boast about that. The devil is nobody's friend. Humanity was created in the image of God, and the devil even hates those who follow him. The devil even hates those who follow him. I saw this post on Facebook. It said, and I don't know who, who quoted it. It's from years ago. Uh, they, they had it representing politicians in America, but it said, a wicked man will burn his nation to the ground so he can rule over the ashes. Okay? That's Satan right there. Satan, you, people can pledge allegiance to him and he'll use them for, you look at, at, at entertainers and people that really get into the satanic stuff, a lot of them die really young. The devil is nobody's friend. He is nobody's friend. I don't know if he thinks that uh, every so many million souls extra in hell will lower the temperature a little bit. I don't, I don't know what he thinks, okay? But he's nobody's friend. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Anytime, anytime you deal with the devil, that's, you're gonna get one of those three. He's gonna, he's, he wants to kill you and just be done with you. He wants to steal anything God has done for you. And if you have enough faith to stand for God, he's gonna try to destroy everything all around you while you're standing for God. That's, that's the devil. Uh, that's, that's what he gets paid for, one guy said, okay? Uh, that's what he does. That's what he wakes up in the morning and goes off to work. That's what he does, okay? The devil, this gives us a glimpse into, into the spiritual activity behind the scenes of human history. Satan is clearly the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy people's lives, their health, their families, 
their purpose in life, and all that is good. Jesus has come to counter and destroy Satan's network of evil. Amen? Jesus said, I am come. The devil has been doing everything he can to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. Right in the midst of all the evil and all the trash and all the stuff that goes on, right in the middle of it, Jesus said, I have come to give you life. And that you might have it more abundantly. Now, we have to be careful, uh, brain, because we are, if we'll admit it, we are very carnal people we are so we are so abundant life oh man that that uh, uh, that lawyer he has that palace and he drives a Lamborghini man he has an abundant life not true he may have abundant things but that doesn't mean he has abundant life there was a big lawyer down there in uh, near Georgia he's actually just across the border in South Carolina it's been in the news where he had his wife and teenage boy killed. I think he did it himself. Because I, I, I don't even know. I, some of that stuff goes on. I don't even go deeper. I'm like, you know, I don't even need to know how people get so wicked. Okay, just, but that, that was horrible. This super uh, years of, of, of uh, being an attorney of, of the family, like great grandpa was, grandpa, dad, and now him, and just, all this money and everything and the wicked stuff that goes on. This guy had more money than, uh, uh, one guy said he had so much money he could burn a wet mule with it. Uh, but what good is it? That's not abundant life. I'm not putting money down, okay? If you really hate money, just, just, talk with Sarah or Joyce, they, they collect the offering and deposit it. If you just got an issue with money, talk to them, they'll, they'll put, it, put, it, put it in the bank for you, okay? Uh, I'm not preaching against money, but I'm saying that's, that's not the key of success. And when we measure success by that, okay, when we measure success by that, um, it can get real hard. See, Jesus, he came to destroy the works of Satan. 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John 3 and 8. Listen, listen what the Bible says. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose... We're talking about why did Jesus come? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. I looked up then studying, I looked up that word destroy. And the Greek word it comes from, it means I loose, I untie. To break up a meeting to unbind so something no longer holds together. It's like to take the wrapping off. The devil had humanity all wrapped up and thought it was his present and every soul belonged to him. Jesus came and he took the wrapping off and said, no way, they belong to me. But before Jesus came and died on the cross, man was, man, the, there's a few shining lights of faith through the Old Testament, but it was few and far between. Man was wrapped up, but Jesus came and opened the way to where man now can stand before, listen, when I come before God, I don't come with Bradeen the drinker, Bradeen the smoker, Bradeen the cursor. That person died over there in Germany in 1982 he that guy died okay and I am the resurrected bread I've risen in newness of life 
That old guy, he's gone now. He tries to come back every now and then and move into his old house, but I, I let him, no, 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 no. I live here now, get out. Stubbornness, get out. Pride, get out. Selfishness, get out. Anger, get out. I am new in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. What's the, what's, what's the, the glory of, of, of uh, great riches if you can't get along with your spouse? Or you, you, you can't raise your children right, or, or you know, just whatever. Or you can't, you know who a, a lot of people can't get along with? Themselves. Themselves. A lot of people can't get along with themselves. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Oh, the joy of just a life given over to Jesus. I guess I dropped this thing, huh? What in the world has gone on? I'm sorry. I started hearing funny noises. All right. Try this again. The joy of knowing that your heart is wrapped up in the Lord. Because you get your eyes on people, you get your eyes on family members sometimes, you get your eyes on the things of this world, it, it'll, you, you'll go in a spiral of depression. When you get your eyes on Jesus, and I'm I'm not one, I'm not I'm not able to say this because I studied it and found some good illustrations that some people went through some stuff and I can report to you. No, I can tell you. He's an ever-present help. I can tell you at 55 years old being homeless after being the dean of a Bible school and at having a church that had about three to 400 people in it, driving an $80,000 automobile and living in a three quarter million dollar home, I can tell you when everything goes south, guess what? There's a song that says, when you come to the place that I'm all you have, you'll find I'm all you need. I had to eat every message I ever preached. God reminded me of all the victory I preached over the years. God reminded me of all the worship songs. Just take this whole world and give me Jesus. Just take this whole world and give me Jesus. Can you? <laughs> That's easy to see when everything's going right, but man, when the whole world fell apart and there was nothing I could do about it. There was nothing, nothing I could do about what other people were taking control of. Wicked people, evil people, and people uh, uh, used by Satan. And God reminded me of these songs. You know what I did? I sang them. I sang them, and the, and the, the, the scriptures that, that I, I, I would quote to others, I quoted them to myself. And you know what? They don't always work. They don't only work on other people. They work on me. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I can testify this is 100% true. A hundred percent true. Colossians chapter chapter two, verses thirteen and fourteen. How did Jesus uh, destroy the works of the devil? He did it through the cross. Colossians chapter two, verse thirteen through fifteen. The Bible says, "And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together? That's made alive with him." So he made us alive with him. When he came out of the grave, everyone that believes in him, he brought us out. 
<laughs> he brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Wow. He hath quickened us together with him, having forgiven you some of your trespasses, no, all of them. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. What was, what was the ordinance against us? The Old Testament, the law, the righteousness that God required. It screamed out against us. You could never measure up. You could never measure up. And that was part of God's plan to get us to look to Jesus. But everything that was against us, Jesus nailed it to what? The cross. <laughs> You're condemned, whatever it is that condemned you. You did this when you were 18 or when you were 16 or 14 or you did this or you failed over here or you did this. These things that speak against us, where can we find them spiritually? At the cross. And when we look to the cross, guess what? I'm glad they're there. Because at the cross is where Jesus broke the back of Satan. And broke Satan's power. And broke Satan's authority. I love the Bible. It says, the, um, it said in, in verse 15, it says, And having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it the amplified said of verse 15 the amplified version says God disarmed the principalities and powers that were raged against us and made a bold display and public example of them and triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross. So the devil has all these weapons that he uses against our mind, against our family, against our finances, against everything about us. The devil has all these weapons. Jesus came in and said, drop it. <laughs> so right now, the enemy, guess what? He still's got, he still has a big mouth, but he's disarmed. <laughs> huh? It's like, it's like, it's like a robber comes at you, okay, and um, he says, hey, uh, give me all your money. I'm taking all your money, okay? And you happen to be a, a concealed carry person, and uh, you pull out your, your 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 whatever you got, and say, "What did you say?" And he's gonna say, "He's disarmed." So he says, uh, "Nothing. <laughs> Never mind. Go go about your business." The devil comes and says, "I'm gonna destroy you now. I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy your marriage. I'm gonna destroy your children. I'm gonna take everything. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this." All you gotta say is. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You're a liar. No, I could do it. No, God disarmed you. I wish he would have uh, put duct tape on your mouth. He didn't do that, but he disarmed you. I guess God left his mouth uh, or his, his, his lies about us so we could be tested to strengthen our faith. God disarmed the devil, folks. God disarmed him. He's a defeated foe. I mean, what, what can you do to the Christian? Okay. Can you, can you, I heard of them in a persecuted area where they, they were persecuting Christians and they, 
they got them there and one of the guards told the other, said, what can, what can we do with him? If we beat him, he believes he gets more rewards in heaven for suffering for Christ. If we, if we kill him, then he gets to go to heaven and be with Christ. What can we do with this person? <laughs> what can we do? Jesus not only disarmed the wicked one, but gives life that is redemptive and abundant. That means full to overflowing. Listen, do you know when you can just stand there, maybe no one else around, and what I've found in my loneliest hours, I'll look back. I, I wouldn't trade them for anything. I'm not asking for more of them. If they come, then God knows, okay? If I need some more, and I'm sure I do, they, they'll come as they come. But looking back, you know the times that I thought it was over? Looking back, those were the best times of my life. Those were the times that I had nothing to hold to but Christ. And those were the times that, that my faith, and those were the times that I, I remember at 55, the devil, the devil say, hey, you're all alone now. Why don't, why don't you, you can't sleep at night. You, you got all this on your mind, you can't sleep. Why don't you go get, why don't you go get a, a, some Crown Royal? Nobody know you'll have it and just sit here and, you know, it'll help you sleep. I said, devil, get out of here. God told me to quit that stuff long ago. I had to fight each one of those battles. Well, they've legalized marijuana. It's not legal now. Why don't you, you know, you used to smoke marijuana. Why don't you go get some of that? It'll help you calm, it'll calm your nerves. And I said, get out of here, devil. God told me to put that down. I would not trade those experiences in my life for anything. Once again, I'm, I'm not a fool. I'm not asking for more. God knows how many more I need and when I need them, and I'm sure they'll come. But looking back, those are the times that the presence of God was so real in my life, so amazing. One, one writer from, from a few centuries ago wrote, he said, about battles and trials, he said, God does so much in them in building who we are. He said, if it was, I think he said, if I remember right, he said, if it was legal, I would almost pray for more battles just to get closer and closer to the Lord. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm not praying for more battles, okay? Like I said, they'll come. The ones I need, I'm sure God, God will send them my way. I'm not praying for more battles, but I am saying this, you know what? As the song says, in those darkest hours, those precious lonely hours, those are the times that God drew the closest. Those are the times when I had, uh, there, was, there was no, no one in reach to reach out to but God. And it seemed like, uh, the devil had the, the, the extra key to my house. It seemed like he came around a lot. But you know what? In those times, that's when God makes us. Abundant life, don't judge it the way the world judges it. Judge it by a closeness to God. Judge it by, by, by the closeness to God, when, and, and, and I'm, Abby and I, I'm actually in the process of buying some of, the, I lost my total uh, library. I had quite a library of, I mean, old books and, you know, missionaries. One book I wanna get, if I could find it, it was called Before I Kill and Eat You. Uh, it was a missionary that went to Liberia. They called Liberia in the early 1900s, they called it, uh, called it the white man's grave. <laughs> and just amazing, amazing things. But 
these people that, that drew close to God. There's, there's just something about it. When you don't have anything else, but you have God, that closeness. I, 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 <laughs> don't get me wrong, please. <laughs> I, I, I like big houses and brand new cars. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not preaching against that. Usually, people who like outright preach against it, they're jealous because they don't have it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not preaching against those things as God brings them to you, but what I'm saying, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundant. Abundant life is not in the things that you possess, but abundant life is in the one that possesses you, Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I thank you so much. Lord, you did not just come to save our soul from sin, though that's the main thing. That's the start. We have to start at salvation. That's, that's the start. But dear Jesus, you came that you may reconcile us to God. Lord Jesus, as one person said, they suspended you between heaven and earth to symbolize that with one hand you reached up into heaven and grabbed the hand of the Father, and with the other arm you reached down and grabbed a sinful humanity, and through the blood of your cross you reconciled us back together. The fellowship that God lost in the garden with Adam and Eve through their rebellion and, and, and allegiance, uh, pledging allegiance to Satan. God lost the fellowship of his creation and he's longed for it. And God, you long for that fellowship today from each one of us. God, help us. Help us, Lord, to look to the cross. Help us to look to you. Help us to trust you, God, with all that may come our way. God, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. Oh, Father, thank you. Why don't you just spend a moment and just thank God for his mercy? If you would like special prayer, can let us know or let someone know we we'll pray with you oh God is so good God is so good there's a song that they used to sing years ago it was called through it all through it all I learned to trust in Jesus learn to trust in God through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend on his word. Oh God, help us to depend on you, to trust you. Father, we pray for, for healing and mercy and grace for Pete, dear God touch him this week as he's preparing for an operation. Dear God, we ask your hand upon him. Your healing. Father, anyone else going through whatever it is, God, touch them. God, touch us. You know, I'm impatient, dear God. And I would like to see, I would already like to see a Bible, a, 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 a ministry training center <laughs> developed here in, in Shalim. I would already like to see that. And it's not happened yet, but God, in your time, 
Help me, God, in the times of impatient, not to look away from you, but to continually look to you. Because I know you're building my soul. You're drawing me closer. You have to be able to trust me. Many people have done you wrong over the years. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Others have forsaken you, dear God. Draw me close, nearer the cross. I will cling to the old rugged cross. My trophies I last lay down. God, we trust you, we commit our lives to you, and we thank you in Christ's name, amen.